Good morning to all stakeholders. Uh, we are joined by uh, some of the UN agencies uh, who are associated with the process and some of the different elements that uh, make the WISIS process complete, like the WISIS Action Lines, the Partnership on Measuring ICT for Development, uh, Bridging the Standards Gap, the Regional Connections, uh, and we will hear from the different representatives today. Uh, I would like to first start with uh, our focal point from e-business, uh, which is uh, also co-implemented by uh, UNCTAD, IP, uh, ITC, and UP. You, uh, Vilidiana, uh, you uh, spoke about uh, you know your e-business, uh, e-trade for women. Uh, can you please uh, tell us a bit more about what you're doing there and how is it linked to the WISIS process? Over to you. Thank you, Gitanjali. Indeed, this year the e-business um, action line focused on bridging, bridging the gender gap. We focused on women in e-business, and a clear trend was uh, came up, which is that women are lagging behind in the digital economy, and uh, the digital economy in general is usually male dominated. We need to bring more women, more women entrepreneurs to the table so that they can take advantage of the digital economy. And if you allow me, I'd like to touch upon three key aspects that came out of the conversation. First, we need to boost women's skills in the digital space. And that starts from a young age to later on while they're already in the workforce. The second um, is access to finance. The women digital entrepreneurs we heard and we work with all tell us that it is more difficult for them to raise funding to scale and grow their businesses. So that's another area where we can do better. And the last one, which is often neglected or maybe undermined, is the fact that we need more role models, more women in leadership position who can inspire others and we can bring the voice of women to the table. And this is what we've been doing here at the WISIS this year. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, digital gender inclusion is uh, one of our key priorities within the WISIS process. All the WISIS action lines are striving towards that. And even at the WISIS forum, we tend to achieve 50-50 gender balance and gender participation. So thank you very much for your efforts. I'd like to move on to Mr. Preetam Malur, uh, who is uh, implementing WISIS action line C5, cybersecurity. So Preetam, what were the key trends you noticed this time? We heard several uh, sessions talk about cybersecurity. It's really the essence uh, that cuts across the different action lines. So, what are your key takeaways? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. So, uh, this year, along with the uh, conversation on uh, you know cyber threats that we've been uh, hearing over the years uh, at the Versus Forum and other places, you know, we noticed uh, that there's a lot of conversation on attacks on. Uh, you know, fundamental infrastructure such as subsea cables, for example. There's conversation on uh, uh, you know risk to satellite communications, and here uh, it's quite interesting because you know the, the, we've noticed that you know the topic of space has reached a tipping point with new actors in there, new services being offered. You know, uh, broadband services obviously being offered through Leo Geo satellites, but also you know uh, universal IoT coverage which is becoming a reality thanks to satellite communications. We are also obviously uh, you know, uh, hearing a lot about you know, new and emerging technologies such as AI, with ChatGPT4 being you know, uh, an epicenter of the conversation, uh, and the metaverse. You know, uh, met th these technologies offer a lot of opportunities, but also bring in some challenges. So this is what we are, we are, we are uh, seeing. And uh, generally, we are you know, uh, seeing a more holistic conversation on digital resilience because of all these different aspects coming together. And even in our action line meeting at the WISIS Forum, you know, we had C2 and C5 come together. Uh, that's primarily because of this reason. Thank you, Gitanjali. Thank you, Pritham. Of course, yes, space as an en enabler of sustainable development was a theme we heard running across. And uh, of course, chat GTP, most of the uh, leaders who had come here, they joked that their speeches were written by chat GTP. But like you said, the uh, challenges were also highlighted. So of course, with every new trend uh, is a challenge of cybersecurity, which uh, uh, we are looking at it in an inclusive manner. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pritham. I'd now I'd like to move on to Davide, who is the WISIS focal point at uh, uh, UNESCO. So Davide, UNESCO implements several action lines. And really, you are the knowledge society's component of WISIS. So uh, could you please bring in some of your thoughts, uh, the key trends that run across your action lines? Thank you, Gitanjali. Um, yes, I think uh, 
Uh, these are very interesting times. Uh, so we have seen, uh, you know, the um, in the in the wave of uh, the uh, recovery from the the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, we have seen uh, uh, now the. Um, uh, the focus on the uh, effects that uh, the digital has uh, brought to the uh, to the um, stage in many ways, uh, including, for example, the education, uh, following the Transforming Education Summit uh, of last year. And we have seen here that now the focus is uh, uh, very much on uh, going uh, the implementation, how this uh, uh, can be, uh, how this is implemented, how this is done in uh, locally for for bringing this transformation actually uh, in in practice, because um, um, uh, in in the emergency uh, mode, let's say uh, these these things are implemented uh, quickly. So now we need to make it more systemic and uh, broad the, make the change. So one uh, takeaway from from these conversations that we had uh, here, not only in education but in uh, many other action lines, is uh, about uh, uh, digital transformation. I think the handling of the management of uh, uh, change, the man management of change is uh, probably the, uh, the barrier that uh, uh, keep, uh, st still keeps us uh, uh, you know, uh, far from reaching some of the, our goals. And uh, the effect also of digital transformation. So uh, we have, uh, um, uh, we heard about you know, the difficulties, for example, uh, in, uh, in gender gaps uh, and, uh, for example, the effect of uh, uh, particularly some technologies like AI in, on the working lives of women, for example, is uh, one thing that uh, UNESCO has uh, been highlighting as well. But as, as we, also the challenges, the many challenges of uh, um, the, um, um, the, the, the technologies that are bringing, as uh, Pritam was uh, mentioning, and how this necessitate uh, the attention to uh, ensure that uh, actually uh, there is a, a dialogue between uh, uh, public and private sector, so that uh, there is a sort of uh, understanding of uh, what are what is the maybe some uh, um, uh, principles that should be applied uh, in terms of um, uh, so, so to enable uh, digital to uh, bring the good uh, commons, uh, the good the good part, and uh, be paying attention to the harmful and uh, um, you know uh, sometimes dark side of uh, of uh, these technologies. So. We uh, highlighted this also very much uh, in this uh, forum, uh, the uh, ethic ethical aspects linked to many of these technologies, including AI. And uh, of course, we have been uh, speaking also about the uh, UNESCO uh, um, multi-stakeholder consultation, which is going on uh, also at the WISIS forum on the uh, principle for regulation of uh, internet uh, platforms uh, that uh, uh, we are conducting uh, this year, in ahead of, uh, of course, in. Uh, uh, the processes uh, that are happening at UN level, uh, like a Global Digital Compact. Yes, thank you very much, David. And, and one thing that we really enjoyed uh, was the alignment with the decade of indigenous languages. Uh, we worked together uh, for Action Line C8 uh, to have a hackathon and to have several uh, workshops to uh, highlight that we are also connecting with these uh, uh, UN processes which are ongoing. So thank you so much for this great collaboration, David. Uh, and now I'd like to move on to uh, Mr. Bilal Jimusi. Uh, so Bilal, you are primarily bringing in the angle of uh, standardization and bridging the standardization gap. So um, uh, how does bridging the standardization gap help us bridge the digital divide? Great question. Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. Uh, so unequal access to technologies and low uh, digital uh, literacy skills are among the biggest contributors to digital divide. And this influences and impacts the ability of developing countries to access and uh, influence international standards making uh, processes. And this is why the ITU came up with the uh, bridging, the standardization gap program, to foster the uh, participation of developing countries in the standards making process, but also help developing countries in the implementation of international standards across the sectors. Thank you very much, Bilal. Uh, it remains an important component of the uh, Geneva Plan of Action uh, and the WISIS outcome documents. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to move on to Esperanza, who is representing the Partnership on Measuring ICT for Development. Uh, of course, Esperanza, we heard in most of the session the importance of data 
and importance of having the correct data for analysis and for be a, being able to plan the future activities. So what uh, has the partnership been doing uh, regarding this? It's, it's a partnership of uh, several UN agencies, please. Indeed, so the partnership was formed as a call from WISIS 20 years ago for the need for more uh, re reliable and quality data. So the partnership with 14 international and regional organizations has been working to improve data availability and quality in developing countries. So far, much progress has been done, but we are not yet there. There's still a large uh, number of countries where data gap exists. And so therefore, there was a call for more efforts in improving data availability, more resources in helping countries build capacity in producing those data, as well as looking into sources that will provide more timely and um, real-time statistics, including the use of uh, big data. And that has been an, uh, an area where ITU, for example, has been doing uh, a lot of work in, in the area of using, for example, mobile phone big data to complement and supplement existing traditional data sources to produce data that could um, estimate, for example, the number of internet users in, in a country. And that is uh, the hope of the partnership that we will be able to explore these new data sources to complement and help other agencies provide uh, or produce the data that they need for policy making. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, SP. Uh, we always need uh, the correct and good data to be able to implement our VSIS action lines. And uh, of course, data is also indicator of uh, what more we have to do to uh, ensure that we can um, use the VSIS action lines for uh, helping to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. Thank you so much. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Yaroslav Ponder. Uh, so at the uh, regional level, the VSIS action lines are are implemented by the regional commissions in coordination with the regional offices of the UN system. So uh, Yaroslav, uh, what are your uh, key takeaways and impressions from the uh, um, uh, region of Europe? Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Gitanjali. At, uh, in Europe uh, and Central Asia, and I will talk about the both regions, because uh, for the implementation of the WISIS we have created with the other UN agencies, over uh, 30 U UN agencies, uh, the so-called United Nations Digital Transformation Group for Europe and Central Asia, in order to mainstream uh, the outcomes of the WISIS and to make sure that we are aligning uh, the WISIS with the SDGs expectations making sure also that we are identifying the policy areas where which have to be um, uh, rolled out at the national level and supporting the UN country teams uh, in implementing and translating uh, the political vision into the action and this is the beauty of the WISIS uh, that in fact uh, we are able uh, to uh, make sure that this what we are debating uh, this week uh, at the global level with grassroots stakeholders with all stakeholders coming from the different um, uh, regions but also uh, from the different origins uh, being the private sector academia uh, that all this we can then transmit and trans um, transpose into the bankable projects at the country level where the one UN acts for the digital uh, development. This is the reason why also this week uh, the UN group um, launched the UN uh, Digital Transformation Toolbox uh, to equip the UN country teams uh, with the necessary tools, policies, frameworks uh, which can help them to form the partnerships and uh, to um, uh, to advance digital development uh, at the country level. So this year we had really very good uh, participation from Europe and Central Asia. We had a lot of uh, uh, cases from Moldova, Ukraine, uh, from Georgia, from Albania. Uh, amazing uh, um, development uh, in terms of the identification of the real needs uh, where not only UN itself can act but also UN can um, forge the partnerships in engaging the private sector uh, in the, our joint vision of um, advancing the SDGs thanks to the uh, digital. Thank you, Yaroslav. Of course, uh, at the heart of the WISIS process since its inception is the multi-stakeholder spirit. 
and this is what uh, I believe you have displayed. And Slovenia, uh, the chairperson of the WISIS Forum, has uh, highlighted uh, this in their workshop uh, that they led uh, the Slovenian country workshop. Uh, there were presence of so many uh, European countries uh, at the WISIS Forum, led by our chairwoman, <laughs> uh, Minister from Slovenia. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to do a very quick round, uh, just identifying uh, concrete <coughs> examples, one or two examples in your respective area of work. So let's start with e-business. Thank you, Gitanjali. I'd like to share one example um, that was present here at WISIS this year. Um, so we had a session on women in e-business and we invited several women who are somehow change makers, already trailblazers, who have succeeded in the digital economy and came to share their experience and show that it is possible. So, for instance, we heard from Lenise Eng. She is the advocate of the E-Trade for Women initiative in Southeast Asia. And she told us how, with her company, Dropy, um, she's providing a platform for moms and pop stores to digitalize, to buy online, manage their inventories. And she has helped digitize over 100,000 uh, small businesses across her country in Malaysia. So this is an example I would like to uh, share with you and hopefully it will inspire others. Inspire, yes, of course, uh, so many role models all over the world. So thank you for bringing them here and for sharing them with the entire world. Thank you. Uh, Pritam, some concrete examples for C5. Uh, uh, thank you, Gitanjali. I'll highlight one, uh, which has to do with you know the opportunities and challenges that uh, emerging technologies uh, bring. So uh, just in December last year, ITU set up a group uh, on the metaverse. Uh, because obviously we know that it uh, positively impacts, it can positively impact all 17 SDGs, but uh, the risks are also quite obvious and are being studied. So um, in December, ITU set up a group. The group is open to uh, all stakeholders, member states, private sectors, civil society, the technical community, you know, uh, the academic community, everyone can engage in it. and. Uh, it's, it's looking at uh, various uh, aspects, you know, different layers, the infrastructure layer, the application layer. You know, it's studying which layer to focus on, of course. And the first meeting of the group was in uh, Riyadh uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and more than 600 uh, stakeholders participated in it. It's housed in our ITU uh, standardization sector, ITUT, and we would welcome uh, all stakeholders to participate. Thank you, Pritam. Davide, of course, you need a whole day to summarize the different activities, but some concrete examples that really stayed with you and for, have formed an impression. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think uh, the one example that I would uh, mention is uh, the uh, work we've done in this uh, forum for the consultation, multi-stakeholder consultation on uh, the uh, implementation of uh, what we call the Rome X indicators for un internet universality. Uh, where Rome stands for uh, right, uh, human rights based, uh, open, uh, uh, accessible, and uh, uh, multi stakeholder, exactly. So, this forum is really the place where to discuss this and uh, where uh, to engage uh, to do this kind of assessment for uh, ensuring that the internet is a place uh, for uh, uh, an ac accessibility and for a human right. Is, uh, is important to bring uh, exactly everybody on the table, uh, t the technical community, yes, of course, the governmental uh, actors, yes, but also uh, the civil society and everybody. So uh, a country cannot do an assessment uh, uh, of this kind without uh, you know, engaging the whole community. So I think uh, that, uh, that was, uh, was, I think, a fantastic discussion that uh, happened uh, in this forum. So I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good, good example. This will uh, enable uh, UNESCO also to uh, work on the um, um, refinement of the indicators uh, that uh, are, are part of this assessment, uh, maybe simplifying some of them and uh, uh, more engage more with the uh, whole community in, uh, in the countries where this assessment has been, uh, has been rolling out, uh, which is, by the way, uh, 45, 44 countries in this at the moment. So. Thank you very much, Davide. Uh, Bilal, for some concrete examples? Sure. So uh, the BSG program, as I mentioned, has two tracks. One is the capacity for developing countries to influence and participate in the standards-making process. And the other is the ability to implement the, uh, the st international standards. So I'll give examples in both tracks. The first one, um, we have perhaps three elements. Uh, one is an online uh, free course on the ITO Academy. 
on the process for standards development, and we encourage everyone interested to take that online course. The second is uh, hands-on training that we do along with our study group meetings and regional group meetings. And the third is that we have many uh, regional group meetings of our study groups in the region, in the language of the region, which lowers the barrier of access from a linguistic perspective, as well as from geographic perspective, because it's closer to the developing countries. And these, uh, the combination of these will enhance significantly the ability of developing countries to participate in standards making. On the implementation side, uh, we have some examples of, um, in the financial inclusion, for example, we have uh, key standards on the security aspects of uh, digital financial services. And we have a lab uh, in place uh, to uh, not only raise the capacity of the telecom and the central bank regulator, but also be able to audit the security solutions. And another example in terms of the implementation in, in the space of smart sustainable cities where we have key performance indicators that are agreed by uh, 18 UN agencies the, uh, under the umbrella of United for Smart Sustainable Cities. And we have implemented that in 200 cities around the world, developed and developing. And that's another example, concrete example of trying to help countries implement these standards. Thank you, Bilal. Indeed, uh, we did see a glimpse of uh, localization and smart cities uh, in the mayor's track at the WISIS Forum. So uh, we have more and more mayors uh, joining the process. It's a new community, but it's a very important community because um, uh, engagement of local communities is extremely important uh, for the implementation of the action lines. Thank you very much. Uh, Esperanza, something that the steering committee uh, of partnerships has been uh, implementing. Yes, I mentioned earlier the challenge of um, unavailability of timely and reliable data. So the ITU as a lead in the steering committee has been also working uh, in a group in the UN Committee of Experts on Big Data and Data Science. And we are leading, the ITU is leading a task team on the use of mobile phone big data for official statistics. And so in this group, and this is our contribution also to the partnership in terms of improving one of the SDG indicators, which is the percentage of the population using the internet, we have been exploring ways in terms of using mobile phone big data and um, this case that we implemented in uh, Brazil and in Indonesia uh, has been very successful where the different stakeholders are working together and using the UN agreed methodology in terms of using mobile phone big data uh, for official statistics. And so in this project, we were able to test the methodologies and the National Statistics Office of both Indonesia and Brazil are able to produce data that are coming from mobile phone uh, data sources. And these results are very uh, convincing because they are as close as possible to the results of the household surveys. So in this project, we concluded that mobile phone big data could be used, but we have to address and work with many stakeholders to ensure that data access issues could be addressed and, and solved in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, SP. Um, Yaroslav, what are some of the concrete examples from Europe? Yes, thank you very much. This year we are very happy with uh, the meeting which we organized because uh, it was the, really the, the demonstration how the Europe and Central Asia works, being facilitated by the, uh, by the UN. We had uh, in the discussion not only the receiving countries uh, with the UN presence, but also those who are interested to see how they can help. Uh, so the presence of uh, the Greece, um, Slovenia, UK, and uh, many, many others, uh, it was a real demonstration that uh, the digital development uh, is really the issue of uh, the whole community and digital doesn't have uh, the frontiers. Um, and talking about the concrete um, example is um, uh, the um, publication which we are co-creating with the all UN country, um, UN uh, members uh, called Digital Development Country Profiles, uh, which we launched this um, week uh, for the Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, where together with the other UN partners, we identified uh, clear um, um, advancements of the digitalization in Bosnia, but also identified uh, the areas where the intervention would be uh, useful. And based on this, based on the discussions at the workshop, we were able uh, immediately to follow up uh, on the discussion on the concrete actions which will be transformed into the bankable projects and matched with 
the interested parties uh, which are interested to help there where the help is the most needed. So we are really creating the value chain which ensures the proper impact, impact for development, uh, and we will continue doing so in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Yaroslav. So as we heard, uh, WISIS has several pieces and components. It's the UN Regional Commission's UN Group, uh, regional com uh, inputs, uh, uh, different action lines, uh, which are implemented by several UN agencies, ITU, UNESCO, uh, UNCTAD, uh, FAO, WHO, there's so many of them. More than 32 UN agencies working with us. The United Nations Group on Information Society, which ensures that, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, UN stands as a, red, uh, as a ready framework for digital cooperation, uh, the standardization gaps, the partnership on measuring ICT for development. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us live from Geneva. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you all in Visis Forum 2024. Thank you.